Hello everyone, today we are going to be building a painted cabin. The first step to any good build is to find a great place to put it. I like to put mine in a spruce forest to match the wood type. To start off, we're going to put a stripped spruce log right at the front where you want our build to start. Then four blocks away, we're going to place another stripped spruce log. About three blocks away, we're going to place another and then three blocks from that one, another. Then we're going to place one four blocks. And then we're going to place one eight blocks. Then we're gonna place one three blocks away. And we're gonna place another one eight blocks away. Two blocks. three blocks and four blocks away. This is going to be where the patio is going to go. And we're going to do another four block one away. Another four blocks, making a little square there. Another four blocks. And we're going to go right back to where last and first logs intersect and place the log right there. Three blocks away from the first one. Then we're going to place a bunch of stone bricks around the edges. This will give us a little base for where our building will start at. Then we're going to place some stairs. And then up our logs by one block each, that way they get a bit of extension. Then we're going to put some spruce logs around our blocks, connecting them, forming the last part of the foundation. And then we're going to place some slabs to finish up the little area back here. Also, we're going to fill in that little area with a bunch of logs. Next up, we can move on to putting the floor. We're just going to take some spruce planks and fill it in. Next, we're going to go one up on all those logs we placed earlier, ignoring the front and patio blocks. You can see which one's in the video here. And then from the patio block, we're going to place one one block out. This is what it should look like. Next, we're going to place our doors right at the front and some trap doors behind them. This does the classic trick of opening and closing automatically. Next, we're going to take our green terracotta and go around the edges, kind of like we did with the stone. We're also going to place the log right at the end here where the patio meets as well. Now to form our inner walls, we're going to place some logs by the doors, two blocks away from that log, another two blocks away. We're just making a little square and then one at the end, all the way across from that. Those will be our inner walls later. Next, we're gonna go up one more block, not on the inner walls, and then go over with our green concrete. When we go over with our green concrete though, we're gonna do a little window pattern. The general idea is just to leave a few spots where you want your windows to go. We're going to ignore the corner back here. Next, we'll start going over it with our green wool. Still not placing anything where the corners are. And then we're going to put a bunch of spruce logs above our door and a bunch of trap doors facing towards the outside. This will give us a bit of a window pane feel. Should look like this. And we can use the last view to get up. Next we're going to do the classic one block on top of all of our logs and then fill it in with green concrete powder. We're going to go over the trapdoors this time. 
Next, we're gonna take our lime terracotta and go over the top. This is gonna give us a bit of a painted gradient feel. By not using a bunch of wildly placed blocks, we can get a bit more of a paintbrush stroke effect. We can then take some spruce stairs and start going across making little patterns. The general idea is to place a bunch of stairs on the side and a bunch of slabs in between where the stairs are. Maybe adding a few stairs in the middle to add a bit of accents. This little effect of adding trim to the roof can add a lot to houses. I think it helps the roof stand out more as well. We're also going to use full blocks on the long sections, or just double slabs, whatever you prefer. Now that we've finished the trim, we can add a bunch of buttons on the side to represent screws or little things holding it together. We're just going to add those to all the spruce logs. Now we're going to build on top of our logs one more and connect it all the way through the building. Starting on the inner walls, we can place a few facing outwards toward where our future inner walls are going. Then we can place a green terracotta right next to our window and upwards to get a ladder that goes to the ceiling. Next we'll make a little pattern with spruce logs on the interior, connecting it all the way throughout the corners which will be facing upwards. Now we're just going to build up the inner walls and connect them. And then we're going to link them to the inner-ish outer wall. Now going back to the outside, we'll add some detailing. First we'll start on the edge by adding a fence and some fence gate in between to break it up a bit. And going on the edges of the front entrance, we'll place some fences and some gates as well as some fences around the doors. Should look like this. Next we're going to go up to our windows and place a bunch of spruce trap doors to represent what would happen if you were to open the window up. We'll do this across the whole cabin.
We'll then place some fences where we put the large trim last time. This is only on two sides, but I think it adds a lot. Then we can place some spruce slabs below where our windows are to give a little bit of a outer window section. Next, we can go to the patio and place some fences and fence gates. Should look something like this. The basic idea is fences on the corner and fence gates in between them. Then we'll place some fences in the middle. And a lantern to the side, and also back over here. Those will help keep mobs away. Then we can put some stairs for seats and some jungle trapdoors to keep up our table. And then put some spruce trapdoors upwards to make the seats a bit larger. Then we can put some moss carpet on top of the fences to make a little table. Back up at the top, we can start adding jungle trapdoors above every button, making to make sure that the little stone part at the top is facing upwards. This will make it seem like it's a bit more linked in although it doesn't really matter if you decide to face it the other direction. We'll also do it above where our big trim is, and just where every button is. Next, we can take some polished andesite and bricks and put bricks where the trap doors meet the air and then bricks in between all of that, facing downwards. This will give us a bit of an overhang for each of our windows. We'll do this across the whole edge of the base. We're also going to place some polished andesite in between that middle section of the front. Next, we'll go up to the top and place some polished andesite on each of the corners where our logs are facing upward. Then we're going to go around it with a bunch of spruce planks. Except we're going to put some polished andesite on top of where the ladder is as well. We're also going to skip the patio section that's open. Next we're going to go up and put some jungle stairs facing upwards around the edges, skipping the ladder. And then we're going to put some back here too, but not going to cover up the patio hole. Next, we'll place some jungle slabs above where all of those stairs were, connecting them all throughout the entire roof. Next, we're going to start randomizing blocks. This can seem pretty complex at first, but if you just turn your brain off and start clicking things, you can pretty much get a good idea of how to randomize blocks without any issues. We're going to use a mix of polished andesite, mud bricks, granite, wax oxidized cut copper, wax oxidized weathered cut copper, Whatever its name is, you can probably find it either in the creative menu or your crafting menu. It's 
partially oxidized copper, but it has a great texture. You can also skip it if you want, because it's kind of hard to get. Then we'll go around the edges with a bunch of slabs all the way through. This will add our first layer of our roof. Another good tip for randomizing blocks is to have a stack of each in your inventory. Then you can try to balance each of them out by keeping them at the same number. This can ensure they're using the same amount of each block, if you're concerned about that. Then we'll randomize some stairs of the same types, going around where we put the spruce planks on the ground. Now that we have an open area, we can start making some four by four little squares with slabs on every side. We can randomize these the same way we did with the other ones, just basically going crazy. We're gonna skip the top right side though. There, we're gonna put slabs on where the corners would go, but then we're going to put stairs above where the corners are not. We can then fill this in with campfires, and we've got ourselves a little chimney. Next, we're gonna start the fence pattern on the roof. We're gonna use a mix of jungle fences and jungle fence gates to make this pattern. We're also gonna break out the area to the right of the chimney to give a bit of a opening. You can just make your stairs curved here, and then we can make a little patio kind of area. Feel free to pause the video if the pattern gets confusing. Next, we're gonna replace the spruce planks where our patio is with a bunch of randomized blocks. And we're gonna place some jukeboxes, rugs, and all sorts of little details around. My suggestion is to maybe put a table on one side with stairs and slabs with a flower pot on top. Maybe add a little research station with a bookshelf and a lectern. We can also make a flag by going up with a wall, a spruce fence, and jungle fence. and then some yellow concrete. And then some yellow wool. We're gonna do it in this shape and we can get a little flag. I also like putting a lightning rod on top of this so things don't burn down around the house. Next we can go inside and add some barrels to the side walls. Add a fence post next to the ladder. Add a little rug in the middle. A bunch of stairs and slabs that are of the jungle variety, as well as some trap doors to make a little bench. Maybe add a lantern and a brewing stand. This will allow for a little kitchen. We can place some fences at the top to finish the little bar. Then we can place some more barrels, a furnace, a smoker, a chest, and a bunch of cobblestone walls all the way up to the top where we can put a chiseled stone brick. After we finished our chimney, we can go into the bedroom, which we can just put a little table with a pressure plate and some spruce fences, as well as a crafting table, lantern, and bed. We can then move on and place a bunch of trap doors on the side here to make the opening. And then we can place some doors for a way to actually get in. You can use temporary blocks to place the trap doors. Or you can try to dodge your way around them. 
Next, we can mess around with some bushes. Just grab whatever leaves you like and mix them around and put them in whatever shape you feel looks best. I find just turning off your brain on this part can help too. Bushes are pretty random in nature, so you don't really have to worry as long as they're not mountains of bushes. Next, we can place some flowers around the base. And congratulations, you've made yourself a little cabin. Now it's all up to you what you want to do. You could change the color palette. Change the color palette back. Build a tree. Place some bushes. Clear a forest. Build a rock. Remove some floating trees. Or even place a campfire. It's all up to you now. So I hope you have fun with your little cabin, and I'd love to see how you guys use it. Thanks for watching. I'm considering making a few more. Sorry if this one's terrible. If you didn't like the video, please tell me and tell me what I can improve. If you did like it, uh, feel free to leave a like.